today. All Ben here from East West. Uh, another great week for uranium. We've had three very good weeks in a row. Solar price rises, everything going the right way. Uh, this week certainly caught me off guard a little bit, uh, the speed at which things have developed. Uh, but that's uranium for you. Uh, so let's just jump in and take a look at it. So this seemed to be the main piece of news, of course, which was uh, UEC grabbing hold of Rio Tinto's Wyoming assets. Now at a glance, it's sort of, you know, it was like, okay, but it it's great, of course. It, it seemed to be the only catalyst I could I could find in particular uh, to, to really spark the rally, uh, which isn't to say there was only one thing, of course, but uh, this was the thing that stood out to me. The other thing that caught my eye, something to just consider, and, you know, I've, I've shown this before, that we're going to see more and more of this because I think this is going to be probably the main driver of, of, of what can get uranium prices going up. Uh, and that, of course, is the continuing story about data centers um, specifically generated to AI and the need for power. And so Morgan Stanley here has said that, you know, data centers power needs are going to double by 2027. And as we kind of know, like the only real source of that power in terms of being available and ready, uh, well, actually not even ready, but able to supply that amount of power is is nuclear. So the more of this sort of stuff I see, the more I think it just feeds into into it. And we know there's a, a bit of a shortage out there and demand is growing while at the same time supply can't keep up. Hence the thesis that prices will eventually rise. Rise. So it kind of seemed to me this week that, you know, we, we had the Constellation news last week, which was a great boost to the market. And then it got more good news in terms of this UEC story. Um, but like I said, I, th I think that on its own is, is probably not the driver per se. It might have sort of been the uh, the ignition, uh, but maybe there's just a bit of a realisation out there that, you know, there might be some more institutional style money putting two and two together, looking at it all and thinking, yeah, I think this is where we want to be exposed in this sector. And that's, <laughs> that's not to UEC. I just mean that they might want exposure to the uranium sector in general. So just starting here with URA on the weekly, the, the one thing I'm looking at here is that we've just come up here, it looks like we've just closed above the top of that weekly cloud. So for me, that that's pretty important. That I'm very surprised that the market went as fast as it did. Okay, It's definitely gone quickly. Uh, so you can sort of see here, it might be a little bit, let me just clear that up a bit. So just timing wise, I just, we just need this Kaijensen here. Uh, sorry, the ten cans to catch up to the Kaijin Center. Okay, so just the faster one to come up, and we want that uh, what's called a TK cross. So the ten can comes across the Kaijin Center, the, the ten can Center. So that that's what we're kind of looking for to solidify this rally. Okay, but I am expecting that the market, you know, will need to take uh, have a breath at some stage. Uh, but we'll look at that in a moment. But look, the fact that we got back above this cloud as quickly as he did uh, is is very interesting to me. Okay, um, we'll we'll look at the connotations on the daily, but that's a pretty bullish sign, especially the way it's done it. So so even just staying with the Ichimoku, I think I was talking about I was expecting some of this flat cloud to provide some resistance, and it didn't provide any resistance at all. The market's just blown through it. So I, I would now expect that is would, would turn into support. Um, so, you know, I, I'd just be looking at, you know, how does the market digest the rally? Okay, now that's a little bit far away. So it almost looks like the market might try to come off that. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but before we get to that, let's just look at what's happened. Okay, so I think last week uh, we might have had this doji candle just, just here at the top. And I was thinking, okay, well, maybe it'll come down and retest. And of course, we had more news and, and, and more pumping and um, it didn't. Okay, it just it just kept going. Um, so you, this trend channel, even though we, you know, this trend line, you know, we, we noted last week that that had been beaten. Well, that, you know, that can be certainly now just removed. So I would also remove that. All right. Uh, now, now, just looking at this now, um, even if I was just going to put a little bit of my Elliott hat on, I'd be thinking, okay, well, you know, what we what we sort of had here was this big run uh, that we, we'd looked at, you know, through a lot of uh, last year. Uh, this looks now like a, a completed three-wave correction, okay? And if you look at this, so we noted last week that this wasn't quite a double bottom. Like this was actually a uh, a higher low. Uh, and when you look at the RSI, uh, look at the divergence that, that crept in there. So let me just uh, move this along so I don't get caught up down here. But you can see, if I can grab this tool, 
change that color between this bottom and this bottom or it's, it's not quite divergence but because this was very close to a double bottom but you can see clearly uh well this is what the rsi means is that the momentum of, was running out okay now when you look at the the way the market's you know put together that makes sense because it, it puked on these big these big candles and this was a bit more of a dribble down where uh you know this is a 14 period rsi so when you look at the rsi for this period the, there was a lot of big down candles whereas this one it was you know there were some down candles of course but they were a little bit more mixed up uh nonetheless the, what what's happened here that's now important as i've pointed out before is that the rsi has now got above 60. now that's a great sign for for, for a, a continuing bullish market so what i would do now is i switch this back to the rsi being at 40 okay so what i would expect in a bullish market i've said this before is the rsi to travel between the over bought area and 40 okay like this so any subsequent pullback that 40 area in the rsi is what we're looking for but you know once again i think you can sort of put your elliot hat on here because this this is what we call an impulse right so what we've kind of got here is you know it's very fair to say this looks like a, a one wave a sharp two wave and now we've got a third wave okay so that that would just be the starting building block of what's going on uh, so just generally speaking we would just take some measurements like this and go okay well look we've got to this little fib area here we are running a little bit hot uh, it doesn't mean you know look a, a classic Elliott pattern you would think would be something like one two three four five maybe something like that to make it up to this area and then you would be expecting um, as we got just that little bit higher up like that pardon me let me redraw that sorry just let me represent that a little bit better so this would be the expectation is that you'd sort of get one two three four and then you, you come up here and get five and what you would see at the same time is the RSI you know it would come down through this four and then it would make a, a lower high through that five okay so that, that you would expect that to happen and then you, you'd be looking for the correction back so you know something along the lines of this before we, we moved off again so we'll just watch how this this pans out uh, but of course on the bigger picture what we've got here is we've bumped into the 61.8 okay and that sort of ties into this structure okay now this structure was what what we saw here is once this broke um, this became you see here it became uh, new resistance so old support becoming new resistance pretty classic right so we've come up and we've just got through that we're sitting in this area on the 61.8 so look I don't know as I always say Monday morning could do that you know no doubt about it but I, at some point I would think that this this rally that we've had off the bottom is going to have to be digested and just this is kind of the, this is what we're going to move into next it's the signs that we want to see next week so we're just down here on a four hour the, the reason being is i'm just looking at from the bottom to the top of this rally okay so the point of control just sits here to you know this is what 28 dollars sort of 80. uh now this is kind of you know not a bad thing this is this is what i want to see sort of next week is that you get big churning volume all right now it, it you know it may not pan out exactly like this but you want big churning volume where that where the price doesn't really fall away okay what that would mean and and what it's meant here is that at, at this point that sellers are trying to take profit okay probably people who have ridden this on a short-term basis it's got up here and you know this is coming into so you know that they, they, they're trying to take profit but what it means to me is there is enough buyers just sitting there holding price so all the sellers are being soaked up okay now we're a little bit quieter into the end of the week okay um, just look at the volume there uh, yeah, so you know, as as we've dribbled away here, there's there's not as much volume, but yeah, coming into Friday, that that might be right. So, do we get this is the only question mark I've got? Do we get a correction that comes down to fill in this, okay, and then sort of tags this fifty and cut and just fills this gap where there's no there's nothing there? Does the market come down here? Are there enough buyers still lurking in these zones? You know, there's a little bit more here. There's a little bit more here. Um, but that that was probably you know this is where people would have been you know been trying to buy in um 
where are the buyers? That, that, that's the question next week. So we, we've got to see what happens. But this, this would be the ideal scenario. Into next week, you would just like to see basically a sideways to maybe slightly drift sort of market with volume increasing, okay? Above the moving average, like plenty of candles like this above the moving average. If you saw that, that would mean that there's a lot of people trying to unload, but at the same time, there is a wall of buyers sitting there buying off them, okay? The less ideal scenario, but you know, still not necessarily much of a problem, and that would be the sharper fall, okay? The sharper fall back on, on not as much volume until we came back into more the, the value area, okay? Where you, you would expect more patient buyers to be lurking, okay? And then we start going sideways and the buyers start resisting the sellers. Well, you know, the, the buyers start supporting the prices. They take the stock off the seller's hands. So you, you would think then that volume-wise that this would be uh, subdued coming down because there are no buyers. And then once we sort of hit these zones, the volume start to increase as the buyers start to soak up the sellers. So that would be what I'd be looking for next week. So we'll just see what sort of correction we get, what sort of overall um, market move we get. Uh, but that is what I'm looking for for URA next week. Uh, so look guys, I, I think I'll just leave it there for this week. I, I don't think there's much need to cover any of the others because it's all more or less the same thing uh, with URA being of course the um, the standout stock the, the, the sort of the big daddy overview stock if you like uh, but it, it is the proxy for everything else so I, I would just stick with you know this because I think if I start going into all the other stocks I'm pretty much just going to be repeating all the same things uh, so let us just see what sort of correction we get next week do we get a flat correction do we get a sharp correction or does the rally just extend further? Because that is also uh, still, uh, you know, definitely a, a possibility as, as we got a new trend emerging here. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, see you next week. And let's hope that stock price keeps climbing for those stars. Cheers.